iTorial Intelligent Tutorials Sent OS 6 Installing from a USB drive using a Windows 7 PC We will need a program called ISO 2 USB you can download it from iso2usb.sourceforge.net. We will also need a CentOS distribution, 32-bit or 64-bit. For this tutorial, I use 32-bit. For this tutorial, I am going to use the dvd1.iso file and also the dvd2.iso files to create my software installation. You will need to download this ISO to USB program, extract it, and then run it. This program will allow us to create an active USB key that will act as though it was a DVD or CD drive. In our case, a DVD drive. First, I open the ISO 1 DVD file, the DVD1.iso, excuse me, and then in the more additional files group, select the folder with additional files selection. Um, I'm going to choose the dvd2.iso file. You'll need to go to where you saved it on your computer. I'm going to create another folder to keep track of this installation, just to make it look a little cleaner. Remember these names, they are important. Hard disk name is SDA and the USB device name is SDB. And we'll leave it at that. Your drive letter may vary for your USB drive, so you should use a lot of caution right here. My USB stick drive that I'm using is at drive N. I would also have you go to your computer. You should go to your computer right now and check to see where your USB drive is coming up as. Because you do not want to put the files on the wrong drive. It will chew it up. And you will lose files on another drive if you accidentally choose the wrong one. I'm opening the screen here so we can watch the installation process. The installation process on my computer, for whatever reason, was just like so, so long. So in a moment here, I'm going to speed up the process just to, to save to save YouTube, to save you guys. But um, But understand that you may need to pause the video for a little while because this part takes 
painfully long. All right. See here that the ISO 2 USB program has properly picked up the DVD2.ISO file. It is now copying the second file that we included um, with this uh, with this package. Now the ISO 2 USB program is extracting the files and installing the bootloader onto the key. All right, it's finished, it looks like, at least with this part. Um, I notice here it's, it's got some instructions. Choose hard drive installation method and select dev forward slash sdb1. Ignore that. That is not correct. Um, it is actually going to be the one that it set as default beforehand, and we'll get to that in a little bit. At this point, your Ceno 6 distribution is installed on the USB drive, so safely eject your USB drive now. Sorry, it's a little hard to see there. It got cut off on the bottom of the screen. All right, now it's time to take our USB drive out of our Windows 7 computer and plug it into our older computer that we're going to use for our Linux box for the CentOS 6 installation. I'm using a DV6000 HP laptop that I got for free, so I'm hoping it'll work okay. Um, I'm eventually going to put the USB on the other side because I have a problem with that USB port. But this part's important. You need to press either Escape, F2, F10. You got to look on your computer at the bottom left to see which, um, which command you should use to go into the BIOS. Because to get into to the BIOS is important because we have to adjust the boot options um, to boot to the CD. To, I'm sorry, excuse me, to boot to the hard drive, the USB hard drive. I also changed the delay because this was so annoying. It took me like five or six times to get into the BIOS. Oh my goodness, it was brutal. This makes it much easier in the future uh, to enter the BIOS or to enter into the option where you get to choose what, what type of device you want to boot from. So I'm restarting the computer again to get to the, the boot options. Boom, got to hit escape here real quick not as quick because we got five seconds aha now you can see it I'm gonna boot from the USB hard drive and there it is going right right to the USB hard drive with our nice clean install of the CentOS 6 that we put on earlier using that ISO to USB program so we're gonna like we're gonna install so it's going to choose it for you if you don't choose it quick. But we're going to choose the first option, install or upgrade an existing system. Now we're going to go through the little setup here. I chose English because that's the language I understand the best. Maybe you will choose a different language. That's cool too. I have a Centrino Duo. Uh, uh, 
there's this particular Centrino Duo that I have. It's a 32-bit edition. So this is going to be a 32-bit installation of CentOS 6. I would have really liked to do a 64-bit installation. But then again, the RAM on this computer is only 2 gigs. And the chip doesn't support it. So I got to go 32-bit. <laughs> At this point, I just click OK, uh, forward slash dev, forward slash SDA1. That's that's where my ISO file is at. So it could pick it up and then start installing it. I just chose basic storage devices. And then click Next. <laughs> Here you get to choose a host name. I chose localhost.itorial, but you could put a name that's more familiar to you. You can try configuring the network uh, with this little GUI, adding it here. I should have did that, but I didn't. I'm actually going to do it manually later, and I will have a tutorial for that. Now it's time to set your time zone. It's good to have a you know the right clock on there so you can keep track of your files when you when you create files delete files edit files and things like that <laughs> All right, this is an important, important step. Set your root password. Um, I'm going to set mine here real quick. You can set yours. Write it down if you need to uh, or something that's easy to remember because you don't want to forget it because it's a pain in the butt to get it back. You have to go into single user mode, and it's really annoying. So something that you could save. I didn't like my password. Uh, maybe I'll give it another shot. Or let me think. Yeah, fine. Let's try one more time. Do do do. Type type type. So if you set a password that's too weak, dictionary word, it's gonna complain. But you could like choose it anyway if you want. Oh great, whatever. I think I'm just gonna choose it anyway. For this computer, I'm using a dedicated computer. I just want the most simple install possible. I'm just going to use all space in the drive. There's nothing on this drive that needs to be saved. But if you are going to use a computer where it's like a dual boot or uh, some kind of fancy type setup, oh, I'd be really careful with this part because you don't want to accidentally overwrite your data that's on the disk. But this disk, this computer, I'm just going to use the whole thing. Of course, two drives are showing up here. The USB drive is showing up as well. I'm not going to put that on there. That would be that might end up causing problems. So just just the hard drive. It's like 150 gig or 175 gig, something like that. Just click the blue arrow to move it over there. Then click next.
if I was using this as a production machine, I would change these values around, but I'm just gonna leave them at default. So I'm just going to click next. It's being nice and warning me that the partition's going to be overwritten, the hard drive that I'm using, and that's fine. I'm just going to start this guy from scratch but if you have a fancier setup you might have to be careful with that you know you don't want to overwrite something that you want to look at later but if you're using an old machine a machine that's donated to you it's much easier just to start fresh with a with a clean partition with nothing on it no dual boot action or any of that click next <laughs> I am going to set this machine up as a web server. So I will choose the web server option for the install. The install process, even though it's shorter than Windows 7, is still time consuming, so I'm going to speed up this part a bit. sent OS load bar going here we should be sent to the login prompt here momentarily there it is you have successfully we have successfully installed the sent OS 6 operating system nice work all right that's it for this tutorial thanks for watching and we hope you'll come back to watch another iTorial tutorial sometime soon